Bruh. Ah. <sighs> So I bought an 80,000 BTU Mr. Heater natural gas heater for my three car garage. I saw a couple of uh, negative reviews on this that had to do with the packaging. It is a little bit flimsy and so people are receiving them damaged and because of that you can pick up one of these $50 off uh, that has some damage on it but I couldn't find any sites that would actually tell me what damage was done. So I decided to just roll the dice and uh, went through Northern Tool and ordered it. Uh, and uh, sure enough, it showed up damaged. Uh, not severely, and I'm one of those guys where I don't like to return things unless it's like, uh, you know, hinders the operation or something like that. But let's unbox this thing. All right, here it is. Now, the damage that I received in shipping was this little tiny dent right here. A little bit of a dent right here, a little bit of a dent right here as well uh, in the front fascia. So that was the first issue that people were having with this. The second issue they were having was that the igniters weren't working after a short period of time. Now, it does come with warranty. So I'm not really too worried about that. Uh, the next most expensive one was I think was one called a hot dog or something like that and uh, it was about double the price. Uh, so for this garage I'm really not too worried about it. So let's go through the specs on this thing. Uh, it easily heats up to a two and a half car garage but it also says it heats up to 2,000 square feet. So this garage is a three car garage and it's an extended three car garage and it's only 700 square feet. So, um, I don't know, these, these, these two are, they, they don't match up. Uh, it is forced air, so it has a fan in the back. It's spark ignition, so it doesn't have a pilot. Uh, three year warranty on the parts of the burner and 10 year warranty on the heat exchanger. So I've got a little bit of warranty here to play with. Um, I feel good about the purchase. Uh, I've got uh, several other Mr. Heater products. I actually use a couple of their portable buddies for hunting and uh, heating small spaces and things like that. I actually use it for the garage uh, now, um, but you know, I go through a little cans of propane all the time and uh, it doesn't heat very well. There's no forced air in it. So that's the reason why I got this guy. So step one was buying the heater. Buying the heater was easy. Uh, I pointed, clicked, shipped, got the heater, got the heater. That's the easy part. The hard part is, is that I'm going to make this extremely hard on myself and I'm going to try to get this legally permitted to be in my garage permanently. So that's where the wrinkle is and I know a lot of you are like, you know, do just put it in and don't worry about it. Almost everybody does it, right? Now I called our local building board and uh, I won't say that the inspector that I talked to laughed at me, but you could definitely tell that he was not taking me seriously and said that I need to do a heat envelope loss spreadsheet and I need to fill out an HVAC certificate and take it down to the permit building and uh, hand it over and then they would tell me what the next step is. Uh, he did say that with the garage doors that I have in place, meaning that I have a three car garage, uh, that it would be hard to permit this space for a heater. So doing some research, I found out that actually some people would believe that it is actually illegal to heat a garage because it cannot be permitted from the standpoint of um, heat loss, uh, especially through the cracks in the doors and, and stuff like that. I need to hit the IECC certification for this space. So I didn't know what that meant, never heard that acronym before. Uh, so what is the IECC? Basically that means that I'm going to have to insulate it exactly the same as they insulate the house. That means that it has to be two coat on all the walls, two coat in the ceiling. It means that um, the doors, the garage doors are going to have to be to code. There is a very good possibility that this is an unpermittable space to put a heater in because of the garage doors. 
Uh, but I'm going to press through at least the permit part. I'm more than just a little bit curious as to what it's going to take in order to permit this legally. So if I sell the house, it doesn't turn out to be a problem. I could always uninstall it, but you know, I, I want to do this. I want to do this the right way. I want to do it to where I'm not losing a lot of heat. It's insulated properly. So this is an exterior wall right here. That's a 20 foot wall, which goes right to here. And then uh, this obviously is an exterior wall as well, because that's where my garage doors are. And then this side right here is about six feet of it is uninsulated. That is exterior, but everything else is all part of the house and is insulated from the house. So I'm good there, but I'm gonna have to insulate this wall. I'm gonna have to insulate the front of the garage here and then insulate this six feet um, with our 13 insulation. And then I've got the attic area in here, which is also not insulated right now. So I've got to insulate that and our code is like R49 um, up there. The heater is gonna go right there right up in there. Also, what's going to take to run the gas line uh, from an existing gas line to the garage, which is not a short run, it's about 55 feet, um, as well as all of the other things it's going to take to uh, connect it and vent it out uh, properly. I think that in the long run it's going to be worth it. So I'm going to I'm going to go forward and I'm going to make this a legal permitted heater if I can, and that's what the next episode is going to be. I'm going to go down to the permit office and I'm going to find out what it's going to take. Uh, follow my channel, subscribe now. So that's a wrap from My Point Three Garage.